Hello, my name is Magnus de Wet, Manager Derivatives Specialist in the Equity Derivatives Market of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It's my pleasure to present today Dividend Futures. This is podcast two of the Single Stock Futures podcast series. In the Single Stock Futures podcast, we did mention that dividends play a role in the futures calculation. We, however, left it out to make it easier and make it easy for you to get into things. But dividends is very important in calculating a futures price. Part of this presentation, I will, introduce, I will explain to you how we do dividend futures included in the futures price calculation. Just firstly, the theoretical definition of a dividend. It is a distribution of a portion of a company's earnings decided by the board of directors to its shareholders. The dividend is quoted in terms of the rand amount each share receives. Okay, so that's just the theoretical definition. So, what this says is, it says that at a point in time, the directors of a company decides they were going to pay a portion of the profits out to its shareholders. Now, you can imagine, if, a, if the board of directors decides to do this, this, the price of that share must fall because some of the funds they have are being paid out. Now, very importantly, as a single stock futures contract holder, you are not entitled to receive that dividends at all. Those dividends are only to people owning shares or physically owning these shares, not through single stock futures. Now, the, the international formula for calculating a single stock future if I could just put that on the board, would be a single stock future futures price is calculated by saying take the spot price minus the div discount the dividend multiplied by interest. Now interest could be calculated very differently. It could be compound interest, it could be simple interest. The way I'm going to explain today is just normal compounded interest. So it would be exponential, the power of interest, multiplied by time. Okay, so that is the international standard for calculating a futures price. What you can see very clearly in this formula is that we are taking out the discounted dividend. Now, you might think, why are we taking out the discounted dividend? Very, very easy. Remember, you are on a futures contract. Now, if you look at a futures contract over time, uh, so this is the price of the share on the y-axis, that on the x-axis, that is time going over there. Now, imagine in a year's time, this is one year, the share price doesn't move at all. It's currently trading at 100 and it doesn't move at all. But in the middle of the year, the directors decide they are going to pay a dividend. Now, what will happen, as we said before, the share price would drop because some of the funds are paid out to the shareholders. The share price will drop and then it will carry on. So if it was a 10 rand dividend, it would have dropped from 100 rand up here to 90 rand, a 10 rand difference. Now, if you can imagine, that is devastating. If you are in a single stock futures contract, and you are the long holder. You would therefore immediately on that day the dividend gets paid, lose 10 rand. So what we've done for, for futures pricing is what we've, we've just taken that dip out of the whole equation. And that is why we take out the discounted dividend from our... So when we price up the future, we price it up that it's a smooth line going right through like that. That is very important, and that is the first concept I need you to understand with regards to dividend futures. The second concept that I would also like you now to understand is that we work with assumed dividends and declared dividends. When we all agree that a futures contract is a contract or agreement for a date in the future, to buy or sell something in the future. Now, if we are looking into the future, if we're looking at it in a year's time, we don't know if the share board or shareholders, or the board of directors is going to declare a dividend to their shareholders. So when we're pricing up our futures, we are assuming an, a dividend. We go back in history, we look at the company's historicals, and we see historically this company pays a dividend every year. Now, we are assuming this. If the company don't do that, 
we are sitting with a risk that when we priced up the, the future in the beginning of the contract, we might have assumed that it's going to pay a dividend, but it actually doesn't. A very good example is Anglo-American, one of our most liquid traded shares on the JSE. Anglo-American in 2009 did not pay a dividend for, a first, for the first time in I don't know how many years. So it does happen. Now, again, as we showed over here, now what's happened is, in the beginning of the contract, when the futures price was calculated, the, the, the financial institution creating this price would have said, okay, we, we create a price, futures price of 90 because we're assuming Anglos is going to pay a dividend. What then happened in reality, halfway through the year, Anglos said, we're not going to pay a dividend. Now, what would have happened if we look at the normal line again? The share price would have continued at 100. Because no dividend was paid, it wouldn't have fallen. So what would have happened in the futures market, therefore, is the share price, the, 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 the futures contract would have moved up in value. So what we do then to eliminate this assumption risk of a discounted dividend, we create what we call a dividend future. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange was the first exchange in the world that introduced dividend futures. Our dividend futures were designed exactly for the purpose of removing assumption risk on dividends. How it works is exactly like a futures contract. We just give the person, when he enters into a single stock futures position, we can also give the long party a long dividend future. The dividend future would be equal to the assumed dividend. So in this example, if the assumed dividend was 10 rand, the person when entering the single stock futures position would have received, yes, he would have received the single stock future at a futures price of 90. But he would have also received a dividend future at a price of 10. Now, what you can see, what would have happened is, when the company eventually came out and the, sh and the board of directors said they're not going to pay a dividend, what you would have seen is the dividend future would have then gone from 10 to 0. Now, being long, you know, being long, if something goes from 10 to 0, you would have lost 10 rand, right? But you would have made it back because in the single stock futures market, it would have added up to 10 rand again. So that explains what we're doing with regards to assumed dividends and um, uh, declared dividends, very importantly. The last concept, and also again unique to the JSE, is the JSE brought out, instead of having to trade two contracts, basically in this example, a single stock future contract and a dividend future contract, the JSE has brought out a contract called a dividend neutral contract. Now, the dividend neutral contract is also referred to in our market as the end contract. Basically, all we've done with the dividend neutral contract, the dividend contract is not a physical contract. You would never own a physical position in a dividend neutral contract. It is a virtual contract that's just traded on our central order book. But as soon as you trade it, it creates both a single stock future contract and a dividend future contract. So it's a virtual contract just making it easier for the person trading on the central order book creating this two contracts automatically and therefore taking away that dividend assumption risk that we're trying to remove through dividend neutral or through dividend futures. Now if we just go and look at the formula and how what is the value then of a dividend neutral contract? Firstly I have to go back again to say what is the single stock futures calculation? Single stock futures calculation as we said before, it is the spot uh, minus the discounted dividend plus the interest. Okay, so that is the formula for single stock futures. Now, the, the formula for an F contract, we said it is the discounted dividend also plus interest. Now, the end contract should be a combination of both the single stock future plus the dividend future. So if I have to go and say N equals single stock future 
plus dividend future. And I've now going to populate it with the actual formulas in this. Firstly, what I want to do is I first just want to take split this one up into a bit more. I think we all agree that if I have to break up this formula into spot multiplied by the interest minus discount the dividend multiplied by the interest, this is exactly the same as that, right? Now, if I have to go and populate this formula, I would get N equals spot plus interest minus discount the dividend multiplied interest, continuous compounding interest, like I said. And then what I'm also going to do, combining it now, I'm going to say plus discount the dividend multiplied by interest. So, if you look at this formula, this is now the formula then for the N or the dividend neutral contract, you can see that here we've got a minus discounted dividend and there we've got a plus discounted. So, these two cancel each other out and therefore the formula for a dividend neutral contract is just the spot price plus interest. So, it sounds very complicated, but it's actually very straightforward. Trading the dividend neutral contract on the JSE, all you need to do is take the spot price, multiply it by the interest. I just showed you all of these formulas so you know how we actually drive to it. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and we look forward to seeing you trading our single stock futures and dividend futures in our market. Please don't hesitate to contact Derivatives Trading at jse.co.za should you have any more queries. Alternatively, visit our website at www.safix.co.za forward slash dividend futures. Have a good day. Bye-bye.